give you all some bad news. You all had a heart attack. You had a myocardial infarction. Unfortunately, your ejection fraction is really low. Normal ejection fraction is above 55. Your ejection fraction is 20%, not so great. So that's the bad news. And there's your, there's your MI, okay? And unfortunately, because of your low ejection fraction, you were at risk for that bad arrhythmia known as ventricular tachycardia. So you had a run of ventricular tachycardia, you went into cardiac arrest, the paramedics came, they resuscitated you, and you got admitted to the heart center, and they noticed that you had some sinus pauses. So your sinus node wasn't working so well, and you had some bradycardia, and so they figured out, after all was said and done, that not only do you have heart failure, but you had a heart attack, and your sinus node isn't working, so now you need a pacemaker, <laughs> unfortunately. So wouldn't it be great if also you could have a device that would be a pacemaker and a defibrillator all in one because you went into VTAC already. You are a sudden death survivor, so you should get one of these anyway but with your low ejection fraction, you're at risk to go into it again. So wouldn't it be great if there was a device that was a pacemaker and a defibrillator? Well, it turns out there is, and it's about this big. But why not be greedy for a minute? Why not have your cake and eat it too? Wouldn't it be great, because your, your heart is still not pumping very well, your ejection fraction is still low despite medications like carvedilol, which usually increase ejection fraction, and lisinopril, and various other medications we use, wouldn't it be great if you had something mechanical to help your heart squeeze? Well, it turns out if you have a left bundle branch block and you have heart failure and you need an additional squeeze, there's something called CRT, cardiac resynchronization therapy. And it's actually a lead in each ventricle, which can help the ventricles pump to increase your ejection fraction. This is all available right now as we speak. That is what is considered the Cadillac of all models. But it gets better. It gets better, there's your device, okay? Because you're on these medications, because, because unfortunately, you know what? You also had some valvular issues and you had some AFib, some atrial fibrillation. I'm, I'm telling you, this is every day. This happens every day, I hate to give you this bad news. But you had AFib, and so we needed to put you on a bunch of medications. But I want to know, as your provider, when I see you in the cardiology clinic, how well are these medications working? How well is your AFib controlled? Because patients can't always tell us how well their AFib is controlled. So I want to know that. How am I going to figure that out? Well, guess what? There's actually something I can use in the clinic to interrogate your device and it will tell me how much AFib you've been in. And what's even more fabulous, I can monitor the amount of heart failure you're having. So this looks at your fluid levels increasing, your device does before you ever have CHF symptoms. Wouldn't that be fabulous? So I get all this information as your provider from your device. The devices are actually even smaller than this. This is one of the biggest devices. This is the one that's the big money, the Cadillac. This is your pacemaker, your ICD, and your CRT all in one. And that's the biggest that they get. Amazing, it's pretty fabulous, right?